Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. Okay, so the, the trap we have here is specifically for catching diamondback moth. So the way this trap works is there's a pheromone bait in here. And I'll pull the trap out and we can have a look. The, the bait is actually attracting the male moths. So here we go. Okay, so inside the trap there's a gray lure. And that lure has a smell, the, the same smell that the female releases at mating time to attract a mate. So the males will smell this. And they're confused, they think there's a female moth. So they will fly into the trap looking for the female. And there's the sticky insert that's been placed inside the trap. So a few male moths have fallen for the trap here. Uh, next to my finger here, this is a diamondback moth. There's a diamondback moth here, and this one, the way it's landed, you can see the diamond pattern on the back quite well. This is why they call them diamondback moth. Uh, the, the adults have this uh, set of about three white diamond shaped patterns on the back. So that's what we use to identify them. So we've got a few of them. There's another one here, um, another one down here. There's about four or five on this sticky insert. And what we do is we will change these inserts weekly and we look at the cumulative counts and we use these numbers really to determine is a region at high risk and it's kind of like the same scenario as the birth of armyworm traps it's all done regionally it doesn't mean a field is at high risk if we see high numbers but it does mean regionally people want to be watching for them now diamondback moth is a little different than bertha armyworm bertha armyworm overwinters here and we know uh, more specifically when to put the traps up for bertha armyworm and when we expect to see high counts with diamondback moth they blow in they don't overwinter well in manitoba at all um, some years we think we may get a few of them overwintering. A lot of years, probably most of what we have here gets killed off by the winter. So we're, for us to have a problem, they need to blow in from the south almost on an annual basis. What these traps will do is tell us when a population has arrived and where in the province. This year, this is, uh, we're into July now, uh, we've had high counts in the eastern part of Manitoba since uh, since May really. So the eastern part of Manitoba agronomists and farmers need to start scouting their fields looking for larvae. The moths don't feed on your crop. Uh, at the very best they might feed a little bit on the nectar or dew drops on the plant but they're not the pest. The pest is the larva, small green caterpillars. That's what you need to be concerned about and that's what you need to be monitoring for in the crop. And so where would you find now, where do they lay their eggs and where would you be looking for these larvae? So I'll just put the insert down. Uh, we'll, to, to look for the larva, we recommend taking some plants. You can pull plants in maybe a foot square area and you can shake them out over something. I've got a, a net here. We'll shake these plants over the net and we'll see if there's any larvae that come out of them. Often people will do this over a, a vehicle hood or, or something in the field. So here's a green lacewing. This is a beneficial insect. Uh, green lacewings love eating things like insect eggs, aphids, small insects. Uh, they've got a larva that it looks like a little, it's alligator shaped, but tiny. Okay. So little brown alligators that run around the crop uh, looking for things like insect eggs. So things like lagus bug eggs, diamondback moth eggs, um, aphids if they can find them in here. Uh, those are the type of things they like. Lacewings often come to lights at night, so people often see a lot of these. So if you start seeing a lot of these, that's a good thing. They're beneficial. So next to my finger here is a diamondback moth. This is a larva. And this one's actually fairly well grown. It's fairly large. Now, you can see it's dangling midair. 
Uh, often when you disturb them on a plant, they will make this thread and they drop from a thread to to protect themselves basically. Uh, in nature if a parasite or something was trying to lay an egg on it or a predator was getting too close uh, they drop on a thread and they dangle when they think they're safe they go back up onto the leaf. So when you're shaking the leaves and the plants and you see uh, tiny green caterpillars like this dangling from the plants that'll be diamondback moth. Now the other interesting behavior is if you disturb them they do this really snaky dance. I call it the diamondback dance so we'll put it on the container here and I'll poke it a couple times and we'll get it to do its diamondback dance. So you can see it kind of almost jumps, wiggles around, goes kind of snaky on us when we disturb it. So that's the diamondback dance. I'll get it into the center of the ring again and we'll make it do another round of dancing. So that's another way you can tell, based on the behavior, that's a diamondback moth. Uh, other, cat other green caterpillars and canola won't do that. Uh, Bertha armyworm, the stages that are green, they would just curl up into a ball. They're a, technically, they're a type of cutworm, a Bertha armyworm. So they do that cutworm behavior, they curl up into a ball. Alfalfa looper just loops away when you disturb them. Diamondback moth will do its snaky dance or it will drop on a thread. So that's a good way to tell some of the green caterpillars apart that you will find in canola. <laughs>